Can you let go, please? So they're actually the smallest owl in the eastern U.S. 93, so that makes it a female. And they're really quite adorable. The other, the thing you have to keep in mind and that I emphasize, um, one, is that they are wild animals. And so um, we treat them with respect and ethically so that the main focus with the birds is on their safety and in collecting the necessary data so that we can learn from them. As the birds are flying in to an audio lure that we're using to attract them, they sort of just um, hit the net and hang out in this pocket like a hammock. Because we're using audio lures and that's attracting them, it'll concentrate birds on migration in the um, areas where we're netting them. So we do have a fairly decent recapture rate, but even with that, I would say it's maybe about 30 to 35% of the birds that are banded throughout the region and the country are getting recaptured elsewhere. And so what these tags are enabling us to do, because we have collaborators now with um, radio towers stretching from all the, up in the northern corners of the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia, um, all the way down the coast as far south as into the Carolinas, um, we can actually get an idea now of individual movements. And so we're not just picking up a snapshot piece in time of a bird is captured in Maine and then five days later it may be captured in Massachusetts, but we may actually be able to fill in some of those gaps. Yep, lots of tags ready for owls. It's gonna be a big night. Yeah, big night. Now we just need to get the owls. <laughs> My name is Marie Martin. Um, I'm originally from the suburbs of Chicago and I transferred to the University of Maine fall 2012. Um, I'm a student in the wildlife ecology program where I'm focusing on a concentration in conservation biology. Marie actually really proved herself to be a committed individual. It's not easy when it's dark and cold and late in October to drag yourself out and stay out to the wee hours of the morning catching owls. Um, but she definitely um, expressed a strong enough interest and commitment to it. I think it's a great opportunity to take those individuals and sort of foster them in this field so that we have um, a continuing generation of young scientists coming up. Probably the most valuable part of meeting up with Adrian was just spending hours and days with her, watching her handle birds, talk about their life history. And after I had shown that I was observant and capable and committed, then she gave me those hands-on experiences, which of course is super exciting for anyone in the natural sciences to actually get out there and handle those animals that we've been studying for a long time. Part of it is just from a interesting natural history standpoint to understand more about the world around us. Um, but my particular interest in this sort of also stems from my own songbird research, particularly for this region where we know so little about the migration routes of the birds that are moving through Maine, and there are millions of them. There we go. This project in particular, our hopes is sort of to take a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach. Um, to understand migration beforehand so that we can make informed decisions for um, energy resource development and other changes or adaptations that we might make to the landscape. So once someone actually analyzes it and figures out where they're at and what habitat they're using, that'll be totally invaluable to managing that species in the future. I mean, how can you manage something if you don't know where it is and what it's doing?